Hello, my name is Nadim Kalailat. I'm gonna talk today about bioactive glass. I'm gonna talk about its importance, its composition, how it is prepared, some of its properties, and its applications in dentistry. Bioactive glass was developed as a result of the research to find a restorative material that combines the mechanical abilities of ceramics and amalgam and the bioactive and aesthetic properties of cements and composites. Its main purpose of use is its ability to deposit hydroxyapatite while preserving high bonding strengths without rejection from the human body. This is the commercial form of bioactive glass. It's called Bioglass 45S5. There are three generations of bioactive glass that were used. An original generation, class A and class B. The original generation contains 45% silicon oxide, 24.5% sodium oxide, 24.5% calcium oxide, and 6% phosphorus oxide. The other generations include these constituents. Um, bioactive glass may also contain biocompatible bio additives like fluoroapatite, holostenite, which is a silica-based glass, and tricalcium phosphate. <coughs> Sodium was thought to be an essential component, but sodium-free bioactive glasses have shown the same levels of bioactivity. Also, apatite formation is highly affected by the amount of magnesium oxide, spinel, and phosphate. Other ions may be added like fluoride, copper, and zinc to enhance the bioactive and antimicrobial effects. Initially, uh, the techniques of manufacturing bioactive glass consisted of heat treatments, then quenching to freeze the atomic structure. But this technique proved to be flawed and ineffective since high sintering temperatures reduced the bioactivity and ion dissolution. To add on, heat treatments caused the formation of crystalline phases in the glass that severely decreased the elastic modulus and strength, leading to easy fracture and failure. A newer technique was developed, and it's based around a sol gel foaming process by treating the contents of bioactive glass to various processes like hydrolysis and condensation reactions followed by low temperature treatments. This formed sol gel when exposed to fluids in the oral environment like saliva undergoes ion dissolution which is essential for hydroxyapatite deposition. However, the interesting part about this is finding the right size for the particles. Because small particles give low mechanical properties and good antimicrobial capabilities, but large particles prompt good mechanical properties but decrease the antimicrobial capabilities of the glass. Bioactive glass was first discovered or developed in 1985 by Larry H. Deitch, but it's under constant evolution and development as we will see later on, that's why I will talk about it today. Bioactive glass has two main properties, bioactivity and, antimicro and its antimicrobial properties. Once in contact with body fluids like saliva, bioactive glasses immediately undergo ionic dissolution and glass degradation via the exchange of hydrogen ions in the solution and sodium and calcium ions from the glass network. The ion exchange results in the formation of silanol groups, silicon, oxygen, and hydrogen due to the hydrolysis of the silica groups. An increased alkaline environment then develops because of the increase in, hydro in hydroxide concentration. The silica network is further degraded as the pH rises, forming orthosilicic acid and silicon hydroxide on the surface in the form of a negatively charged gel. This gel layer functions as a matrix for hydroxyapatite deposition. Bioactive glass has a very important role in combating periprostatic joint disease since its, since its bioactive properties prevent inflammation and infection of vital tissues. Bioactive glasses also have shown to possess broad spectrum broad spec broad spectrum sorry, antimicrobial properties with no observed resistance to date. Once embedded in the body, bioactive glasses increase the pH and osmolarity locally as part of their hydroxyapatite deposition reactions. This creates an environment unfriendly for bacterial growth. Bioactive glasses has many applications, have many applications in uh, dentistry, some of which are their use in dental adhesives. Since some versions of bioactive glass can deposit fluoroapatite, they can be used as dental adhesives in orthodontic treatments to solve the issue of white pot lesions. But care should be taken in the addition of fluoride since its, um, its amount affects mechanical properties. Also, bioactive glasses are used in adhesives since the deposited hydroxyapatite when in contact with dentin reacts with the tissue inside the dentinal tubules resulting in dentinal adhesion and therefore providing a stronger bond. Another use for bioactive glass is in restorative dentistry. What we face today 
or the main issue with mainstream uh, restorative materials today is their polymerization shrinkage upon application. This decreases marginal integrity that accelerates the formation of secondary carriers. However, bioactive properties of bioactive glass and its ability to remineralize enamel and deposit appetite prove to be essential for achieving the perfect restorative material. That's why materials, other materials are added to the bioactive glass compound. For example, Fluoride impregnated by active glass was found not only to increase remineralization but also reduce enzymatic degradation of the dentine collagen network. Also, the increased concentration of um, silver by active glass resin composite increased the number of dead bacteria in biofilm when compared to other samples. So, we can say that silver enhances the antimicrobial properties of by active glass. Also, bioactive glass was incorporated, incorporated into GIC in an attempt to produce a cement with the mechanical characteristics of a resin composite and the antimicrobial properties of GIC. It was proved later that bioactive glass enforced GIC has a higher flexural strength than regular GIC, but this experiment was of little success since it was found that the other mechanical properties were actually compromised. Therefore, this application of bioactive glass is only advised in low-stress situations. Bioactive glass can also be used in pulp capping and root canal treatments because an in vitro study showed that the ions released by bioactive glass particles did not inhibit the growth of human dental pulp cells, but it showed that when bioactive glass was used for direct pulp capping, a dense dentine bridge was formed. Bioactive glass is also used in gutta perca since it enhances the, its bonding to dentine walls without an adhesive. It also provides tight, a tight seal, increases the pH, and provides antimicrobial action. The BioGetta, it's a commercial form of bioactive glass used in uh, Geta Perca, and it's as new as 2018. That's why I'm talking about bioactive glass, because it's under constant development. A final use for, uh, for bioactive glass is in dental implants. Since bioactive glasses might help implants, uh, bond activity to the bone, they are used in dental implants. Also, they provide antimicrobial protection and a reduction in total treatment time. Also, they are less invasive than the predantia. In conclusion, the chemistry of bioactive glass mimics the natural heart tissue, heart tissue's composition and has a bioactive role in the regeneration. The FDA recently has approved bioactive glass in its commercial form Bioglass 45S5 for clinical applications due to the desired antimicrobial properties. This has caused an increase in the use of bioactive glasses in various aspects of dentistry, including dental restorative materials, pulp capping, and RCT treatments, and even in periodontics. I can say that it seems bioactive glass is really the miracle restorative dentistry has been praying for. This is my reference. Thank you.